In this video, we will cover the operation and cleaning of our vertical pump. This pump and hose system is designed to be able to work with our mix cell, but can be used for a variety of other types of printing. When you are making material, make sure that the water content is correct for your current project. Once you have a constant stream of good material from your cement mixer, you can start to put the material into the pump reservoir. With the cement reservoir now filling, you need to turn on the cement paddle agitator. The cement paddle is important to keep the cement from forming a cavity that can let air enter the pump and hose. Before printing, the hose needs to be primed. You should wait until the reservoir is half full and then turn the pump on. When priming, you can run the pump at a medium to high speed and then bring the speed back down to low. If you are using a mix cell, you should leave it on running when priming and printing. Once material is coming out of the end of the hose or mix cell, you will want to check its printability. By printability, we are referring to its ability to print layers as well as supporting its own weight. Now is a good time to add accelerant and test the material. We will go over the specifics of the mix cell and its controls in a separate video. Once you have the desired material consistency, you can start your print. Here the printer is making a prime line and then starting the print. It is important to have the correct pump speed and the correct printer speed. A faster printer speed or a bigger nozzle size requires a faster pump speed. Other factors affect the pump speed as well, such as print layer height. Here on screen, we are using a 3 quarter inch nozzle or 12.7 millimeters. The layer height is 8 millimeters. The print speed is 60 millimeters per second of travel. This results in a pump speed of 1 to 200 RPM when using our vertical pump. This is speed setting 2 on the display. With all settings being correct for your material, you should have smooth, consistent layers. When ending a print, move the nozzle away from the object. If your material has accelerants mixed in, it will be curing and or hardening in the pump and hose over time. We recommend adding a large amount of water into the pump reservoir and sending it through the system. If you are using a mix cell with accelerant, shut off the accelerant flow, but keep the cement pump and mix cell motor on and flush the mix cell. For a full tutorial on our mix cell procedure, please check our mix cell video. Now we will go over the cleaning process. You will need a water source, dish soap, a 10 millimeter hex key, and silicone spray. Here we are taking the pump out of the cement reservoir to clean the outside of it. After cleaning the outside, the inside of it must be cleaned as well. To do this, we will be running the pump with a soap and water mixture. You can use the existing cement reservoir after it is washed, or you can use your own bucket. We will gradually increase the pump to high speed. With the hose attached, this will clean out the majority of material. We now need to fully clean the hose. To do this, we will take the hose off, insert a cleaning ball, and then put the hose back onto the pump. With the ball at the start of the hose, we will then turn the pump back on. The pump should still be in a bucket that has a soap and water solution. This will force out any remaining material that is in the hose. Now, use the 10 millimeter hex key to take off the plugs that are on the upper pump chamber. There will be some material in the upper chamber that needs to be cleaned out. For cement-like materials, a garden hose with a spray nozzle should be sufficient. With the interior and exterior of the pump now clean, silicone spray needs to be put into the rotor and stator. The easiest way to do this is to turn the pump upside down and spray silicone spray into the input. You should run the pump for three to five seconds to make sure there is a good coating of silicone spray on the inside of the stator. Make sure to keep hands and fingers away from the pump input when turning it on. Clean any other parts that have cement on them to prevent buildup over time. A garden hose rinse should be sufficient. This video has covered the operation and cleaning of our vertical pump system. Thank you for watching.